Bloons TD6, a simple game of monkeys popping balloons, but after playing a bit, the game is just too easy. You get money so fast that it becomes a cakewalk, so what could we possibly do to make the game more difficult? After thinking for a bit, it hit me. Why not make our towers unable to do damage? Is this even possible to beat? Well, let's find out. I started up the game and was immediately presented with the biggest two decisions of this whole challenge. Which hero do I bring and on which map? Keep in mind that none of them will be able to attack, and after deliberating for a while, I determined that Sada on Resort was the only combo I could choose, for reasons I'll explain in a bit, and started up a game with the goal of beating round 100. So I started by placing down Sada where she couldn't reach the track and a glue gunner right next to the loop. Now we have 200 lives, a mana shield, and a spike pile to start us off, but how are we going to beat all 100 rounds if our monkeys can't do damage? Well, let's explain the rules. We can't deal any direct damage, so Sada or other monkeys attacking balloons is not allowed. But indirect damage is fine, so things like abilities and monkey knowledge spike piles are on the table. So with that, you can see why we chose Sada. We needed a level 3 ability that could do damage without the hero being able to pop balloons at the same time. Sword Leap allows us to do this, but how in the world is it going to let us save up thousands of dollars to be able to afford a different tier 4 tower that has an ability? And that is why we chose Resort. This map lets the balloons stack on top of each other after completing a loop, so more balloons can be popped per Sword Leap if timed correctly. Then I just added a glue gunner to slow down the rounds as it doesn't do any damage and we were off to the races. I quickly placed down a 200 farm to increase our cash generation, but by round 11 we were quickly bleeding lives, even after upgrading the glue to a 012 for bigger stalls. So we needed another ability to spam ASAP, but our choices were even more limited than I thought. You see, on top of needing a cheap, spammable global ability that has decent popping power, we also needed the monkey to not pop balloons on its own. For example, we couldn't use the boomerang monkey as it would definitely be popping balloons while turbocharger was on cooldown. This left us with a few options, but I chose the Blade Maelstrom due to its low cooldown, impressive pierce, and cheap price. So on round 15, I sold the farm and got the 040 attack shooter. At this time, we only had 79 lives remaining and 85 rounds to go, which is not a good ratio. Luckily, spamming this ability in combination with the occasional sword leap was enough to get three farms up and running before having to start another Maelstrom to handle the mid-30s. Even after getting this one up, I leaked a few more times due to leads and camos, though if I had just gotten a 300 sub up, I think I could have avoided some of these leaks. Anyway, after the second maelstrom, I knew we needed some additional ceramic and mo popping power if I was going to beat round 40, so I got a 042 wizard in the very bottom left of the screen. I used this beautiful palm tree to block all of its vision, so I knew it would never attack balloons on its own, and I had a pocket phoenix to call upon whenever times were getting tough. With this, we easily took down the round 40 mob and continued on to free play with the goal of taking down the bad. And because our defenses were so strong, we were able to get 3 banks before finally getting a village for our attack shooters. I made this village a 4-2-0 to increase their attack speed, give them camo detection, and decrease their cooldowns and all their abilities. This worked great as they still did not have the range to hit the track, and then I got a 3-0-0 sub for our little glue gunner and the camos became a thing of the past. Right around this time, the banks were nearing max capacity, so I collected all, improved one of them to an IMF loan so I could deposit my money, and got one of the tags to a Super Maelstrom for that huge increase in ability popping power. Things were looking great, but I knew the hardest part of this run was going to be the end. For now, I just had to focus on farming and spamming my abilities, so that is what I did, and 18 rounds later, I was able to trade in my banks for a Monkeynomics, which would be my main income source for the rest of the game. At this point, I desperately needed more damage and really wanted to upgrade the Summon Phoenix to a Wizard Lord Phoenix, trying to think of arguments like the Passive Phoenix is technically the Tier 4's ability, but one thing kept me from doing that, and it's that that's lame. So I started working on the two other towers that I deemed worthy of this challenge. The first was a 050 ninja as that time slow and percent health reduction could come in handy, and the other was tons and tons of 240 spike factories along the bottom of the track. I could just barely place these guys so they wouldn't place any tacks on the track so I didn't have to worry about them accidentally popping anything. Then I buffed them with a 250 village in case I ever wanted to combo the abilities and I knew I had a fighting chance. Now from boss events, I knew that a great partner for spike storms is the glue storm as it increases the damage of every spike pile, but there was not a place that I could put it so it wouldn't hit the track. This was the first tough decision in a while, and I decided that getting it was worth losing a bit of track length. You see, the end of the track was no longer the exit. Instead, it's right where the glue gunner can attack as I cross path it as a 250 so it can glue mob class balloons, meaning if it attacks, the corrosive glue will do damage, instantly ending the run. 
Now, round 90 was quickly approaching, and my new goal was to get Sada to level 20 as quickly as possible, so we could get that sword charge that sweeps over the track three times per use. I spent all of my money training her to become the best sword master I could make her, and after this, I no longer needed the monkey nomics, so I said my goodbyes and sold it to the highest bidder. Now that Sada was level 20, I felt good enough to handle any single round, though in the later 90s, I'm sure I would slowly use all of my spike storms, leaving me basically defenseless. And that is when it dawned on me. We already moved the end of the track up to the glue gunner, so why not fill after that with spike storms? I just had to be careful that no spike got close to the entrance, as even one damage to incoming ZOMGs would be an instant run killer. So that is what I did, and it brings us all the way to round 95, where Sada was able to single-handedly take down the round, allowing me to use Glue Storm, Homeland Defense, and a dozen spike storms to break the initial charge of 96, and wait for Sada's sword charge to come off cooldown and clean up the rest of the round janitor style. Next was 97, which was a simple case of stalling for all my abilities and insta pop the two fortified ZOMGs with Homeland Spike Storms. But then the dreaded round 98 approached. At the beginning, I wanted to do some microwing of a Pirate Lord to pull in every single blimp, but I didn't have the money for that, so I let the Spike Storm strategy ride. I had to use just about every ability, including Sword Charge, Homeland Defense, Glue Storm, and 20 Spike Storms, but we made it through. This did leave me with limited options for the fortified DDTs on round 99, but I just did the Grand Saboteur's ability to slow the DDTs and a handful of Spike Storms to pop them, which left me with only the bad remaining. The problem was that I spaced my Spike Factory so they wouldn't damage any ZOMGs at the entrance, but I totally forgot how big the bad was. And for the first time this run, I was absolutely helpless and was forced to just watch as that bad quickly approached the intersection. The body was clearly small enough to slide by, but I wasn't sure how big the actual hitbox of this thing was and it was terrifying to see how far the flipper stuck out on each side. Now you might say that the flippers are not a part of the hitbox, but I say that it was the perfect timing of this majestic purple whale raising its flippers as if to avoid the spike piles, which completely saved the run, and no one can convince me otherwise. But while this was happening, I got up a first strike submarine because I was so over spike storms, and I used its ability right away. After shooting the first strike missile, I sold the sub so it wouldn't shoot at the ZOMGs once they were in range, and I used every ability at my disposal to destroy this monster. And with that, we finally did it. 100 grueling rounds and a bad later, I can finally say that we beat Bloons without dealing any damage. And my reward for such an epic feat? A 001 bomb shooter and a cool video. How do elk buffs take effect instantly? Is time super fast, are the potions magical, or are the monkeys just super fast at absorbing drugs? And to build on top of this, how does Stronger Stimulant work on towers like the Spike Factory and Tack Shooter? Do the elks just coat the entire tower in their potions, or is there a special way to buff these monkeyless towers?